Hi, I'm Caleb. I'm a cardist, and I'm interviewing other cardists to see how and why they create, so we can learn how to grow as a community. Welcome to Cardistry Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cardistry Talk. This is episode 27, and today I'm joined by Seb Fays, a popular cardist in the community for his shorts and also uh, appearing in some pretty big fan brands, uh, videos with Fontaine and uh, Dealers Grip. Uh, Seb, welcome to the show and thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, dude. It's a pleasure. Yeah, um, I'm super excited to um, get to talk with you and hear your perspective. I just think in general with the Carter Street shorts, I see like a big focus on kind of a filmmaking and, and a lot of it's very unique, the, the style of stuff you're doing. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely my main focus these days. You know, the, the filmmaking part of what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and going into that, that is kind of just the topic. Um, do you find that you get a lot of inspiration from, um, from popular film and filmmakers like David Finch and, 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 and more, more of those guys? Because I, I feel like I see a lot of that inspiration in your work. Um, maybe Wes Anderson as well I feel like mm, yeah definitely I think um, I, I don't try to copy them but I do try to you know maybe steal a little bit from a vibe that they have in a movie or uh, maybe a cool shot or a composition uh, Wes Anderson is definitely a big inspiration um, because he's he's like he's like a big kid making movies with a really large budget Mm -hmm. and that's i think I, I think that's that's awesome and also the actors he has it's like it, it's off topic but <laughs> it's incredible i don't i don't know how he does it but um david david finch was also a big inspiration of mine um but i i always try to come up with uh, with things on the spot and the the, the that has plus sides and or, or pros and cons i should say the pros are that you basically are making a video with feeling because everything you do, you know, it doesn't really come from thought. It's just, this feels best for me to do at this moment. And you don't, you know, you don't storyboard it or you don't write it down before you just go out and film. And that's cool. Um, the cons of that are that it's really hard to start doing it because it's very hard to plan something like that or filming something like that ahead. And another thing that I that I talked about on a, on another um, podcast thingy was that I think that we all have it have this database of movies and video clips and music that we've seen that we've seen before. I think that we all have that in our heads. And when you come up with things on the spot, it's really easy to unconsciously actually pick something from that you know database and use that for your own project. And that has a risk to it because then your project might start to look like something that someone else has made already. Uh, and you don't want that, of course, but it's fun. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> Let's put it there, yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. It's almost kind of like what you input affects your output a lot, um, mm -hmm. like in the style of your editing and, um, you know, framing and everything. I know you said in like uh, your talk with the cardistry gang that like you prefer usually to kind of do like just wake up and you're like, okay, let's make a video today instead of just planning it out. Yeah. So I find that interesting. I find I'm the same way, but um, I, I think I am an impatient in my videos. So like I don't give them as much time as I should, even though it's, mm -hmm. um, so that's something I'm going to try to work on. But um, do you have any tips for people that are wanting to make cardistry shorts or just their own solo video for the first time? Jeez. Uh, well, it sounds really, really corny, but I think you should definitely do what is fun at the moment. So if you don't feel like doing some, if you don't feel like doing this, then you do that, if that feels right. So just try to find out what works best for you and, that is really the way how you create your own style because you know, you can't create a style with or, or thinking what other people might want to see. That's not your own style. That's what that's, you know, the other people's style. 
and you want to create your own because then you're unique and you're special you know we're all born different so you know let's use it let's take that to our, our, our advantage advantage yeah i feel like i see a lot of that kind of like not necessarily copying but um for like anyone I, I forget what video it is but where they have the over like they have a, a video in the back and then a video on the front yeah yeah i feel like everybody's been doing that lately and trying to copy that style instead of you know trying to make their own thing i feel like i always see that um but yeah i think it's important to maybe get inspirations and sources from different um different locations than just the Carter Street community um, yeah. to make things more interesting and unique like you say, with, you know, films and um, movies, taking things from them, whether you know it or not, um, consciously, is um, part of the reason why I think yours are so impressive, at least to me. Thank you. Yeah. I think, I think more people should, or maybe can try to look outside of cardistry itself. Because if we, we have this circle of, you know, cardistry, and you're in the middle, but if you copy this, then maybe someone here will see that, and maybe someone here will see this, and then it shoots around in this circle. But it's, I think it's great to look at another circle and, oh, maybe copy that, and then another circle might see that, and oh, that's great. You know, let's try to expand it a bit. And that's why I, I love movies, so that's why I'm trying to do this, you know, this movie thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we, what we've seen a lot of too is, the taking from magic into cardistry. We've seen like a lot of that um, in recent years for obvious reasons. But now I think we're starting to expand outside of that kind of realm of just magic mm -hmm. and cardistry. I know for me personally, I'm, I've talked about this a lot, but uh, soccer is one of my main passions growing up and I played it in college and, and et cetera. So I try to incorporate a lot of um, like foot stalls and foot things into my moves, a lot of more so stunt type things, but I feel like that's what people have most enjoyed from what I've done instead of trying to copy other people and try to be good at as good at packet cuts when I'm really not um, as good as most other people in that area, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm hoping to see like other people take, you know, chunks from other communities and kind of interweave into their own cardistry. I think that's yeah. going to be a lot of growth going forward since we've already taken everything from magic. <laughs> you know? mm, definitely definitely but that's also where where most of us come from mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's probably the easiest to pick something from but man soccer <laughs> that's something else i think that's great that's really great and it doesn't like just the fact that you even attempt to copy it i to be honest i've never seen your stuff i'm yeah. sorry to say that but um I'm not surprised I, will, <laughs> I will definitely check it out after this a bit of stock but it's like even without seeing your stuff i can tell that it's it's close to you you personally you know mm -hmm. because i don't know anybody in this in this world that takes something so close to their hearts for you it's soccer and puts that in cardistry it's like i, I feel like so so soccer or a sport is something that you grow up with you know, it, I don't know how old you were when you started doing soccer. But yeah, I was like six. Six. I mean, that's so young. And movies, that's basically something that you start to understand when you're maybe a teenager, besides watching cartoons and maybe uh, animated movies. But like soccer is really something that is is close to you as a person. That's what you grew up with. That's everything that you have right now is almost shaped around you with soccer if mm -hmm. that makes sense i'm just i'm trying to make sense of something that's in my head but it's really hard <laughs> yeah and what i found too is when i kind of like I, I i was in cardistry in high school which is i'm an old i'm an old man in the cardistry community where i'm like 25 which isn't really old <laughs> but um <laughs> oh man um there's like this like six seven year gap where i wasn't doing i kind of wasn't doing cardistry and i came back to it around covid time because i had more you know, free time. Mm -hmm. um, but I found like, I created so much in that first month when I was just trying to think of stuff through the eyes of a soccer player. It was, yeah. there was no like, 
hurdle into creation. It was just creation. And I don't know if that was like an unconscious buildup of thoughts and creativity, or if it's just, this is something that I have a lot of experience with and just translating as much of it into cards. Um, it just seemed really easy as compared to now, where like if I try to create something, most of the time it doesn't happen as easily as when I first got back into it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's <laughs> that's crazy. I, how that how does that work? How does how do we as humans work to make that happen? Mm -hmm. I it, it it almost sounds like there's like a bucket, and through those six or seven years, just little water droplets started dripping in there. And then mm -hmm. in that first month, you just, you emptied that bucket and this creativity started flowing out. Yeah. I, it, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it, how that works, but it's great. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if you found this with, with you personally, but like, if you try to like kind of force yourself to be creative, it almost never works. And then it always just kind of randomly happens. Like at some point, you don't know why. And let's, mm. at least like you said like a bucket it just kind of overflows and you're not really sure yeah it just happens it's just it's feeling i think that's it i think it's all feeling and emotion and we it, feeling and emotion is really hard to understand mm -hmm. yeah um so you've gotten to work with um some pretty major members of the community like i said before fontaine dealer's grip these are two huge ones um was there ever a point in your car street career so far where you feel like you've made it or is that even something you think you can feel as a cardist i don't know it's i think it's to be honest i think it's pretty easy almost to um get a video with a brand and this is, might sound a bit controversial or, i don't know but i started basically taking inspiration from all of her stuff, like a lot. If mm -hmm. you look at my old material, it's people, like the only comments I got were, oh, little Oliver and uh, small Sogar. Then at some point, Oliver started noticing that. And then, you know, he, he basically took me, who is a little, you know, outside version of his own style. And he used that for his own brand. And I think that's kind of like, it's it's almost too strange to be a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So um, I was I, I forgot what your question was, but <laughs> uh, what, what, what did like, you ask? If you've ever felt like you've made it as a cardist, or like right. is that even something that you can really feel? Uh, um, I think so. Yeah, I I didn't feel that myself, but I think it is possible. I've definitely come close to that feeling um, because dealership, like that was my favorite brand ever. And it was great. It is great. So, you know, it doesn't matter how small a community is, there will always be people or brands that you look up to. And for me, that was dealership. So that moment when all of her was like, let's make a video, you know, that's kind of, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's a great, pretty great feeling. Because that person or that brand that you look up to the whole time asks you to do something for them. It's like you're part of that something that you look up to. Immediately, you almost place yourself up there. Mm -hmm. um, but then also, when that video is filmed and you know it's online, there is this day of great comments and, oh, wow, great video. And then people move on and you have to move on as well. You know, then it's then you're maybe you feel like you're here, but this sinks to here. And then there's another big thing up there. There will mm -hmm. always be more. And there will always be another thing to look forward to or another, another, another thing to accomplish. So I think it is possible to get that feeling for a bit, but not, for, not for long. Mm -hmm. You know, I think maybe um, Zach is like, yeah. is the only person I can imagine right now that, maybe has that feeling quite often because everyone may, maybe not everyone but a lot of people are you know resting on his shoulders i feel like sometimes the entire community rests on his shoulders because he he, he has so much power it's incredible 
It's, it's really incredible. Mm -hmm. It's scary, but you know, he uses that power well. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think organ book was a really great like video. I really enjoyed that one. I think Thank the you. other's grip, like, like, what is it? Deckard? Mm -hmm. No, grotesque. Grotesque. That's like my favorite video of all time. That one's so, I can come back to that at any point and watch mm -hmm. it and like feel like I gained something from it. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. I think I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah, yeah Gordesk is, is an amazing video. It's the perfect Oliver video. Like, it, it, that's Oliver. It, mm -hmm. the, cut, the cuts are way too complex to understand. And before, before that video, it, you could kind of see the point of the cut. But now it's just this big, mess and it's it's great it works it works yeah. fantastically S somehow it completes itself even though it looks like it never never should exactly yes it's art <laughs> it's art um so you've um going back to just a completely different topic um you've released some tutorials on gum road um what are, what are kind of your thoughts about monetization of cardistry and, and playing cards um i think there are a lot of ways to actually monetize cardistry but it's just we're not just not quite there yet i i mean tutorials are uh are a way to make money doing cardistry and i can't i can't complain because of you know people support me and my moves and which is incredible and i'm i'm really thankful for that then it's there is such a huge gap between that low low end way of making money i, I don't know how to really put it in english mm -hmm. but um and then you know there there's this huge page space until you come to the point of producing decks and that is the, the money making wise you know this mm -hmm. is maybe uh 300 bucks with the bundle I, somewhere around that it's not specifically specifically yeah. what i make but and then this deck is is maybe 10 grand per mm -hmm. uh 1500 de decks that you make um so i think decks are um i think decks are great but people do make almost too much of them i think yes there are too many people that start by making a deck. It's like they don't have really have a name, if I'm able to say that. Um, and they they come into, into the community with a deck. And it's, you know, that feels like a little bit money hungry to me. They It feels like they spotted this gap in the market and thought, oh, I can fill that gap with a deck. But then they have no idea how many people think that there is a gap in this card stream market. And also try to make a deck and as their way into the community. Um, but of course, the, the bigger brands like Fontaine and anyone and Deer's Grip, they make a shitload of decks, um, which is which is fine. You know, they they put the work in and they I feel like they deserve it. Maybe that's the word I'm I'm looking for. And I'm totally not saying that other people don't deserve it, but I just don't. I just don't feel that. Like I, I just don't really feel that yet. That they um, maybe should get that easiness for them. It's mm -hmm. again, I'm trying to say something, and I, yeah. I don't know if I'm putting it right. So if this sounds completely bad or like a, like I'm an asshole, I'm sorry. I really don't mean it like that. But no, I, I agree. We have such a small community, and like if you're not then there's so many people trying to make decks like i feel like just trying to keep up with it like i've, I've spent a lot of money on decks this year and i'm like i'll never be able to keep up with all the brands that i would want to support and mm -hmm. then you have just random people popping in and it's like what have they done for the community to warrant us like to spend our money when there's Yes. so many what, other what, people giving so much to the community 
yep what have they done to deserve our money that's i think that's a way of putting it yeah yeah because if we want a deck of cards like you can just grab a tally hill or a bicycle if you're just trying to get a deck of cards <laughs> yes yeah but if you're making a custom one like there there has to be something to back that up with because we Definitely. have the ability to buy a deck for at least in the united states we have an ability to buy a deck for three dollars that's totally fine and usable yeah yeah for sure and it's it, it's like it's not that much um uh, it, and it's so much more expensive to buy a custom deck. It's mm. fi- it started with fifteen dollars. Now it's eighteen. You know some brands are selling it for twenty four. That's fuck. Mm-hmm. It, that's insane. <laughs> it's like you can actually just get a deck for three dollars. You know that guys. It's mm-hmm. you can do cardistry with that. Yeah, and like. I mean, this, this, these tally ho bricks are $25 off a gambler's warehouse. And like, I don't know, like for the same cost, I could buy a Fontaine or I could get 12 decks. Like, I don't, I don't know what's rough to like, yeah. for me personally to warrant that. Yeah. Um, on, the, on, on the other side of that, custom decks do have more value to them. I feel mm-hmm. it, they're maybe like a, what I what I thought of re- recently was, you know, brands usually make a video and that video makes you feel something as a customer. It's like, oh, that's exciting. That's great. I want to buy that deck. Mm-hmm. And when you have that deck, that feeling can come back and come back. And I don't think, of, at least me, I have never had that feeling with the Tally Ho deck. It's mm-hmm. that this is so practical and a custom deck like Dots, that's you know, that has a story that is the people behind it are special or have been in this community since day one, you know, they built this community. That's also another thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I also just, I remember getting my first Fontaine. It's like, I couldn't sleep for two days. I was so excited. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you, do you, do you own any Fontaines? I just have the Halloweens that they recently released. Yeah, how did it feel to get that? How did it? Yeah. Oh, it was so cool. Just, I'm a big fan of Halloween, the like movie series. So like, mm-hmm. for it to be with something cardistry related, I'm like, this is insane. Like, yeah, I'm so. I hope that they can. He continues to work with Universal and like the, in the Halloween time. Like that'd be incredible. Mm. But yeah, yeah, it's so cool and like especially i think there's something to said i think chase has spoke on this before or like holding a deck of cards that like you've seen someone do really cool like awesome unique stuff with and like it kind of correlates when you're trying to create something yourself because like you feel like you have the capability to do that as well like you feel because you have this deck of cards you are able yeah. to do more it's like a superpower yeah. yeah i don't know if you've experienced this but i with when I'm excited for a deck of cards and then it comes in and I first open it and mess around with it, I'm much more creative than if I am just going to a deck that's new that I'm not, you know, I'm not super excited about. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely relatable. And I think for the, for the viewers of this as well, I, I bet you that there are a bunch of people watching this that also, you know, had that same feeling before. It's something so magical. It's like, uh, it, it's, it's great. It's really great. I think it's, it's so, it's special. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's, I've mm-hmm. never seen anything like it. It's, I've never had that feeling of, you know, buying something and then feeling like I, that product actually adds something to me as a person. Mm-hmm. And that is what decks usually do or at least did. Mm-hmm. make me feel like i find for like me too like it's usually when I, it's like a getting a tool almost you know so like if i were to buy like a new camera that's really expensive like i'd be like oh super cool like for like two days but you get the yeah. same experience with buying a new deck of cards and it's much cheaper because it's it's the same thing it's a tool mm-hmm. and like you have that excitement which it does fade away at least for me it does it fades away but the 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 cost to entry is so much less than so many other things. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It it's also very now that I think about it, it's also very funny that it almost seems like some people are addicted to that feeling, and that is um, debt collectors. And I, I mean, I have nothing against them. I, you know, I have a bunch of decks as well, <laughs> but and I, I can see you have you have a bunch of decks in, the, in your background as well, but yeah. Um, that's, I think that's the, like the first year that a person does cardistry is almost the most magical one because then you, um, then you see, then you start to discover all these decks and man, I was so, I remember being so excited about illusionist decks and theory 11 decks. And now I, I, they don't excite me anymore, mm-hmm. but then it's, it, it's always like you're discovering something new every time you buy a deck. And then at some point that ends, but you're still, tra- still trying to get that feeling. And I think that's where a deck collector is born, <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like I said, with my gap of not doing cards and not being in the community really at all, like when I came back, there's so many videos and so many brands. Like Fontaine was just becoming a thing when I kind of left. And then mm-hmm. like I come back and there's like anyone, Car Street Touch, Lotus in Hands. Like every day I could like find something and like it would be like a rabbit hole. And like yeah. I would give anything to be able to to go back to that first month where I came back and and like experience all that again. Cause it was like it's like magical, like you said. But That's then it, crazy. it wears off. <laughs> but uh, wow. I'm just I'm so amazed. I can't imagine what that's like. Isn't that also very scary? Because I don't, I don't know why you left in the first place. But if it's very, if it it was, if it was something that you cared about, I can imagine that you maybe feel like maybe they fucked it up. You know, maybe they fucked this art form up. But yeah. why, why did you stop in the first place? The main reason I stopped was just to focus on college and soccer. So I was playing soccer in college. So that's like that's a lot. So yeah, I. I mean, I still kind of shuffled cards, but like I, I wasn't, I wasn't up to date with the community or anything, and I wasn't learning anything. Mm. It was just kind of something I did, but as a fidget type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I came back, it is weird because the community has drastically changed. Like Instagram is now like kind of the focus, whereas it used to be YouTube or like um, the Cuso and stuff like that, um, mm-hmm. like dedicated websites, and now it's all on Instagram for the most part, and it's just. I don't know. It's just weird to leave a community for so long and come back and it's completely different and it's grown so much. And like people that like used to be considered like big names, like aren't necessarily known as well. Um, mm-hmm. um, do, you, do you know who Kevin Malone is? I've heard of him. I don't know him. Like I, I, I can't imagine yeah. what his stuff looks like. He like, his cardistry is like the, the moves aren't like crazy insane, but his videos, like they evoke an emotion. And like, that's what a lot of the, the early videos, or at least the stuff that I got into were kind of about it was less about necessarily the cardistry and more so like um, using the cardistry kind of as a tool to evoke emotion or, or show emotion. Yes. Whereas yes. now a lot of videos are more so like to show off the moves, the moves are the focus. That's something I really miss, and that's something he does really well. And like, I don't, I feel like nobody really knows about Kevin Malone, and he's he was like one of my favorites when I was getting into it. Like he was a big inspiration. That's awesome. That's I've never noticed that, but now that you say it, I I, I know what you mean. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. super special. Wow, write that down, viewers, because this is something. That you want to take note of wow i'm actually amazed it's also like the um nostalgia almost like for like finding videos because like a lot of people deleted videos and that's that was kind of frustrating or like private yeah. that private videos that like i really enjoyed and like i i add a lot of videos to a, a playlist i have on youtube i call it like car street classics or something it's just videos that I really like to watch Mm -hmm. and like I always see like 
two or three videos privatized randomly or like removed and that's always like super disappointing mm. it's like I need, I need to start doing a matt fox does and like archive videos <laughs> yeah that guy I, i think he has like the whole hard drive <laughs> with all the videos on it mm-hmm. yeah that's a good idea that's really one day there will be a carter street museum and you will be the director of it matt, well matt yeah. fox would be <laughs> <laughs> you, you and be matt to... fox how about that <laughs> like yeah yeah that'd be so cool to like find some of those um yeah so like we said obviously like film is a big inspiration um for you and um in your videos and just in general do you have any like underrated movies or filmmakers you would you would recommend to me or other people uh okay wow damn i feel like wes anderson is isn't like that well known Mm -hmm. so in case you don't know him wes anderson is a great director maybe you should consider watching some of his stuff there is this great dutch director And his name is um, Rob Luker. And <laughs> his stuff is like really, it's really on the edge. It's like almost at the point where you're like, this is a bit too far, but it's still so amusing to watch. So I would recommend Rob Luker. Um, uh, and besides that, I think... He's, his movies are pretty well known, but Damien Chazelle is a is a great director. He's the director yeah. of La La Land and mm-hmm. Whiplash. Um, so, you know, I know La La Land isn't a very big favorite under the uh, modern folks, but <laughs> I like it. So yeah. maybe yeah. La La Land's like what like one of my favorites, like top five. Great, great, awesome, awesome. But yeah, yeah, Damien Chazelle is good. I like him a lot. Yeah. Um, just going into the the cardistry shorts that you make as opposed to kind of like solo videos, what's kind of your thought process in making those shorter form videos than um, kind of more beefy ones? Obviously you have, was it hyperspace? I can't, what was the really big video you did that was like 10 minutes? Oh, it's called Card Palace. Card Palace. Yeah, that was yeah. really off. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, you have that. But um, what's kind of your thought in making these shorter form videos as opposed to longer ones? Because that's something that I don't think we see a lot of. Um, I think that there is not really... Sometimes there is no need to make a video really long. It's like you can also try to put your message in a video that's one minute plus instagram videos can only be one minute otherwise you get this really annoying igtv thing Mm -hmm. that i had to use for the last short which sucks it's like (laughs) oh people have to click this extra button to see your work and it's (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's not that much but in social media language that's like waiting 10 seconds in for the train i don't know something like that but that that was the main reason that i was like all right let's make it short and uh short and powerful and i don't know i it's i think i almost my brain is still very much like a wet block of clay that you can you know shape or form in every shape or form that you want um and i spent the first like four years of my teenage uh, teenager career watching YouTube videos, which is a waste of time. Don't watch YouTube videos, guys. It's, it's a waste of time. Go do something. But um, I guess that's where I learned to look at things that go really fast. And I think that's where the really, you know, the bam, 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 mm. um, concept or i don't know what the word for it came comes from in my shorts it's like people they don't want to they don't want to feel tension on social media they don't want to watch a movie on social media otherwise they would go to the movies 
Um, so I think that but that's 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 not really something that I thought about, but it is. I think it is something that I noticed or, um, you know, that I felt like it mm-hmm. has to be short and powerful because otherwise people don't want to watch it, and it also is way more fun to, um, you know, almost make make a make a picture. I feel like the 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 shorts are basically a compilation of pictures that put together form a little story but then these pictures they maybe have like two different positions of a you know of a, of a subject that's mm-hmm. in the frame so um for instance the the halloween fever the first opening shot where the the camera goes down and then you see this pumpkin there and the, uh, the plant arm and grabs mm-hmm. the grabs the pumpkin you could put that in like two photos, you know, one with the sky and then one down where you see the pumpkin with the plant arm around it. And then the rest is all filler, filler photos, basically. So, you know, I, I guess that's, I've also, I've also never, never thought about that. It's just something that I come up with right now. But um, I think movies have maybe six or seven of those photos per, per, per shot. If you look at Steven Spielberg films, those takes are incredibly long. They are really long, which is also, it's, it's awesome in my opinion. Uh, but that's like six or seven um, photos. And I'm also not comparing myself to Steven Spielberg here with the, mm-hmm. <laughs> that really, you know, I don't even need to use words for that, but um yeah, I think that's it. It's like short and powerful. Wow, I spent so long to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're totally fine. I think what you see Thank too, you. at least what I feel like I see is is when you're like jumping between so many, you know, sections and scenes, it makes it more interesting. Um, and like you said, it's easier to digest in like the social media type of setting where mm-hmm. everything's so instantaneous and like so mindless almost. Yeah, um, yeah. I think what's really interesting, is like talking about Spielberg and stuff, and like I've thought about this a lot, is how how hard it is to make a long scene still interesting and and look good, um, as opposed to the shorter scenes. You can make it's easier to make them interesting because you're not looking at them as long. Whereas, like, it takes yeah. someone really skilled to like take a long scene without any cuts and still have it be like interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. Well, I think um, in in Steven Spielberg's case, in maybe Back to the Future Three, I think or two, where they are in the in the in, in the Wild West, there is this scene where um, the the main character Marty McFly, I think that's his name, mm-hmm. he walks into the old shed where the Mandalorian, you know, it, it's it's stored there or I don't know if it's actually there. I, it's a bit blurry, mm-hmm. but I remember this really long take in that in that whole scene, um, and there was so much to look at. And I think that's the the main thing that makes it fun to look at because um, there was a mirror behind the professor that has the reflection of Marty McFly. But you could you could so you could look at Marty McFly, but also at his reflection that showed his face. And then in the background there is a there there is a car or a um, there are a couple of horses walking by and you know there are sounds. I think those are all ways to make a scene more interesting. Mm-hmm. A long long take. I'm sorry, and I, I also don't remember if you asked me a question there. <laughs> I don't think like, I did, but okay. it's just. Uh... Just Sorry, my head. No, I, sometimes my head just goes off without. I I, you know. I much prefer, and I tell these to everybody. I much prefer to. I, I hate like structured interviews where it's just like there's no room to breathe or like to put anything outside of those questions. Like mm. it should be. I want these to at least be like a conversation more so than like cool. here's X, Y, and Z. <laughs> yeah. Questions yeah. one to ten because no, that's like a quiz. No one wants to 
No one wants to go to school. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Everybody hates school. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> For the most part. Yeah. So at the end of the show, um, I don't think I've told you this yet. I usually do what I call the, the rapid round of questions. Um, so this is it's three minutes of random questions that are just anything and everything. And the goal is to answer as, as many as possible. You, you ready? You prepared? Yeah. Okay. Pineapples on pizza. Do they belong? No. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. What is the most famous Cardist you've met? Brand? Uh, Cardist. What the most famous Cardist? Uh, uh, Andrew Jack. If you could have coffee with any Disney character, who would it be? Mickey Mouse. What would the title of your autobiography be? Shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Paper is not for white writing, but for playing. <laughs> Favorite type of food? Thai food. Hmm? Thai? Thai food. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Favorite movie? God damn. <laughs> that's a really <laughs> that's a really hard question. Uh, let's go with Fight Club. Uh, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Come on. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> favorite move? Sybil. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, I would want to move objects with my mind. Your favorite TV show at the moment? The Office. Nice. Um, favorite deck of cards of the uh, Teleho fan decks. <laughs> um, favorite musician or band? Uh, oh. <laughs> what is music? Um, <laughs> no. Shit. Let's go with the Babe Rainbow. Have you ever broken a bone? No. Summer or winter? Summer. Right. Um, if you could add, if you could add any word to the dictionary, what would it be? <laughs> uh, ge geometrical screwdriver. Screwdriver. Okay. <laughs> um, you went through a lot of questions. Um, describe your absolute perfect day. <laughs> feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, and feeling good. To top it off. Wow, feeling good, feeling <laughs> perfect. Good. Sib, thank you for taking your time to be on the show. Um, at the end of the show. Um, I like to do what I call roll out the close-up pad. So that's just my way of saying, is there anything that you would like to promote or anything you would like to leave the audience with? I'm making a deck. Have a wonderful day, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. And um, keep watching these episodes because why not? It, you know, just why watch. <laughs> why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, so as always, I'll have links to Sib stuff in the description. So make sure to, if somehow you don't know him and you know me, check him out. I would be surprised. But um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Sib, for being on. And we'll see you guys later. Hope you all have a wonderful day. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.